everyone. In this class, we will try to learn about what is active transport. Active transport is a transport process that utilizes energy and occurs against the gradient. Is active transport. Three common characteristics of active transport mechanism are its uphill transport. Transport occurs against the electrochemical gradient of the substance. It requires energy, energy utilized for the transport uh, and it is derived from the breakdown of ATP. Hence, they are susceptible to metabolic poisons. Third, it exhibits saturation kinetics. This is because limitation uh, in the rate of availability of carriers or supply of energy. The mechanisms of active transport it can be primary active transport or it can be secondary active transport. So these are the some of the difference between active transport and passive transport. So active transport occurs against the electrochemical gradient whereas passive it is along with the gradient. In active transport uh, ATP hydrolysis occurs where in passive ATP is not utilized. So active transport saturation kinetic is a feature. I mean it may not be present in passive tra transport uh, except for the facilitated diffusion. Primary active transport is a transport mechanism that directly utilizes metabolic energy for the transport process. The mechanism is operated by uh, ion pumps. The features are the solute is transported against electrochemical gradient with the help of energy. The energy is derived from the ATP. The ion pumps hydrolyze ATP to ADP. As the ion pumps hydrolyze ATP, so these are also called as ATPases. So these are the some of the examples for uh, the ATPases, uh, their location and their functions. So they can be P type, V type, F type or ABC transporters. Uh, P type are sodium potassium, calcium and sodium potassium ATPase. So most of them, I mean uh, sodium potassium it, it is present in all the cell membrane. Calcium uh, ATP is present in sarcoplasmic retic reticulum and potassium uh, hydrogen ATP is present in cell membrane. So H hydrogen ATP is present in lysosomal membrane. Uh, mitochondrial ATP synthesis is present in inner mitochondrial membrane. CFTR protein uh, which is present in plasma membrane and MDR1 protein is present in uh, plasma membrane. ATPases. The commonly occurring ATPases are sodium potassium ATPase or sodium potassium pump. The other common ATPases are calcium ATPase, hydrogen potassium uh, ATPase and uh, hydrogen ATPases. ATPases are classified into P type that is phosphorylation type, V type or vacuolar type or F type, uh, energy coupling factor type and ABC transporters. Sodium potassium ATPase. The sodium potassium ATPase is an antiport that pumps potassium into the cell and sodium out uh, of the cell against their concentration gradients. This antiport transport system is primarily responsible for maintaining the high potassium and low sodium concentration inside the cell. Structure Sodium potassium ATPase is a heterodimeric protein made up of two subunits alpha and beta subunit. The alpha subunit at the cytoplasmic site the alpha subunit has a ATPase activity and binding site for uh, 3 sodium ATP and phosphate. At the extracellular side, alpha subunit has binding site for 2 potassium and obein. So this is the diagram of uh, sodium potassium pump. It has alpha unit and beta subunit. Here you can see uh, it has a, a potassium binding site outside sodium uh, binding site inside uh, as well as ATPs and uh, uh, ATP binding site and phosphorylation site. Functions of sodium potassium pump. Sodium potassium ATPs is a P type of ATPs uh, as a carrier protein is phosphorylated during the process. It pumps three sodium ions out of the cell and two potassium ions into the cell. Cytosolic ion concentration. Sodium pump maintains high concentration of potassium and low concentration of sodium inside the cell. By maintaining ion concentration on the both the sides of the cell, sodium potassium pump regulates water movement across the cell membrane and thereby 
it maintains its cell volume the function of sodium potassium pump is to maintain high intracellular concentration of potassium which is very essential for i mean protein synthesis sodium pump sodium potassium pump maintains the resting membrane potential by maintaining the ion gradient across the cell membrane it is one of the important factor for maintenance of resting membrane potential sodium potassium pump mediates action of many hormones on the cell some important examples are thyroxine aldosterone and insulin mechanism of action phosphorylation and dephosphorylation of the carrier protein lead to the transfer of ion across the cell membrane binding of 3 uh, sodium and 1 atp molecule to their respective site on a subunit activates the enzyme atpase that catalyzes the hydrolysis of atp to adp liberating high energy phosphate bond so is the process which is called as phosphorylation phosphorylation of alpha subunit um, by atp causes conformational change in the carrier protein that transfers the sodium from inside to outside the cell in potassium bind to the outer surface of the alpha subunit that this leads to hydrolysis of the aspartic acid bond so in which the process is called as dephosphorylation <laughs> dephosphorylation in turn causes reconfer- reconformational changes in alpha uh, subunit that transfers to potassium uh, outside to the inside of the cell so then reconformational changes uh, of the carrier protein uh, occurs that returns uh, to the original conformation regulation of sodium or potassium pump activity so many hormones chemicals drugs act by increasing sodium potassium pump activity such as thyroxine insulin aldosterone g actin etc many hormones and chemicals act by decreasing sodium potassium pump activity such as dopamine digitalis metabolic po- poisons like dnp uh, etc hypoxia and hypothermia inhibit potassium pump activity so this is again the diagram showing uh, sodium potassium pump calcium atps present in all the cell membranes membrane of endoplasmic reticulum and sarcoplasmic reticulum in muscle cell the main features and functions of uh, calcium atps are this is p type of atps the calcium pump actively transport calcium out of the cell and therefore maintains higher concentration of calcium in ecf compared to inside the cell the calcium pump present on the membrane of sarcoplasmic reticulum in muscle cell and the endoplasmic reticulum in other cells transports calcium out of the cytoplasm into the organelles therefore maintains a low cytosolic concentration of the calcium it also helps in the storage of calcium in these organelles for ready availability of it at the time of need of Uh, like in muscle contraction sodium potassium atps sodium potassium pump uh, sorry hydrogen potassium atps hydrogen potassium pump present in the luminal membrane of parietal cells of stomach and the intercalated cells of the distal nephrons in stomach this pump proton uh, it pumps proton into the gastric lumen in exchange of potassium this is the primary step in the hcl secretion in the stomach in kidney uh, it secretes h plus ions in the tubular fluid and reabsorbs potassium hence it plays important role in acidification of the urine hydrogen atp is of prot- proton atp is the hydrogen pump or the proton pump is located in the membrane of lysosome endoplasmic reticulum and mitochondria in lysosome and endoplasmic reticulum it's a v type atp is named uh, for its first discovery in the vacuoles and vesicles of the cells it pumps protons from the cytopo- cytosol into the organelles thus interior of these organelles become more acidic so which is needed for the physiological activities in mitochondria the proton pump is located in the inner mitochondrial membrane but it is f type atps in this organelle its main function is to synthesize atp in mitochondria by utilizing energy stored in proton gradient created by respiratory chain secondary active transport 
transfer of one solute against its concentration gradient by using the energy generated by gradient of another solute usually the sodium is the driver solute for the most of these mechanisms energy created by the sodium gradient is created for the transport of other solutes the sodium gradient is generated mainly by the sodium potassium pump though the transport system by itself does not directly utilize energy it depends on the function of sodium potassium pump so that is why it is called as secondary active transport the typical example for secondary active transport is reabsorption of glucose from kidney tubule or in the intestine steps are as follows the primary active transport uh, of sodium out of the basal and basolateral membrane of the proximal tubules of the nephron and small intestine by sodium potassium leads to decreased concentration of the sodium in the cytosol of the epithelial cells so this causes uh, i mean this causes facilitated diffusion of sodium from lumen into the cell the carrier protein that transfers sodium from the luminal fluid into the cell also transport glucose in the same direction and the same port since the transport depends on primary active transport of sodium by sodium potassium pump it is known as secondary active transport so here i mean primarily sodium potassium pump uh, it pumps out uh, the sodium outside the cell so there will be concentration gradient created so because of which the sodium tries to move inside the cell because of the creation of the concentration gradient so with this sodium the glucose or amino acids they also move inside the cell okay so this is called as secondary active transport so this is in brief about uh, the active transport thank you